Yo. How's it going everybody and welcome back to this materially white course. Now in today's video we're going to be talking about how to work with a table component in this library and by the end of the tutorial we'll have built something like this. It's a basic table with a little bit of styling attached to it so we have in my opinion the greatest pillars of all time in order and uh, we have some styling to our header as well as to our rows itself where we have basic gradients that are dynamically attached to each even and odd row. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, so I've opened up the documentation for this component and if we scroll down, the very first thing that we see here is a basic table. Now this table has nothing special to it, it's just a header with a bunch of rows and that's it. Uh, this is actually what we're going to be building in our tutorial, but after that we have the data table. Now the really useful thing about this data grid table is that if we have a large amount of data, we're able to use a data table and we can provide it in more rigid structure so then our users can view all the data in a very concise form and the really cool thing about this is that we can actually uh, filter through our headers so if we wanted uh, ascending and descending by first name or last name or age we can do that and after that if we wanted to save some room vertically we can also use a dense table um, this basically removes all the extra padding and makes it as small as possible after that we can do the sorting and selecting if we wanted um, like I was saying earlier with the data table we were able to sort it by um, order, so ascending or descending depending on the header and we're also able to select it. So if I just click on one of these rows we can see that we have two selected and then we can do a certain action to those two selected if we wanted. Now in this case this delete button doesn't actually work but it does give you a little bit of an imagination of what is possible with selecting a row. And after that we can also provide some pagination if we wanted. If we had let's say a data set of 50 rows and we only want to display five rows per page we can do that or 10 or 25 and then after that we can also provide a page initiation. So right now we're on page 1 to 5 of 13, then we go to 6 to 10, and then 11 to 13. Now for customization. Customization in my opinion is pretty good in this uh, component. If you wanted to customize basically anything you wanted, uh, you're able to do that. Let's say you wanted to customize uh, the fifth row right here, and you wanted to only make this 3.9 protein grams to be a color purple if it's greater or equal to, let's say, 2. Uh, you can do that. That was a, that's the most specific example I can think of, but you can do a lot more things with the customization. You can in fact go into, um, if you go to the very bottom, you can see the API, and inside of here you can see exactly which type of thing you want to customize. So let's say if you want to customize a table cell, we go in here, and it provides us exactly all of the different types of CSS styling classes that we can target, and uh, there's a whole lot of customization that's available to us for this component. Now like I said earlier, we will be covering some customization for our table after we go through the documentation. And if we scroll even lower, we'll see the sticky header example right here. It's exactly what you think it is. All it is is the header is sticky no matter how far you are scrolling up or down the table. So it doesn't go, it doesn't leave the screen no matter what. Now let's say you wanted to group a bunch of headers together. How would you do that? It's pretty simple. All you would need to do is use the table head tag and encapsulate table rows with inside of it. And then this is the example they give you right here. We have two different uh, headers right here where we have country is grouped with name and ISO code and we have details assumed with uh, is grouped with population, size, and density. Now this is where all of materially white tables get really funky. Let's say you wanted to append a little bit more information that you can't quite fit into the table itself without making it too long. Well, you can actually collapse a table. So let's say in this case we have a frozen yogurt right here. If you click on this arrow, we can see a whole bunch of extra information, another table in fact, with more information such as date, customer, amount, and total price. And it's fairly easy to use if you click on this show source code and we scroll down. We'll see exactly how they're using it right here in a collapse tag and then just provide exactly what they want inside here. So it's another table, table head, row, table cell, and all the information that's associated to that specific row. So now let's say you're making an invoice generator app where you want to make sure that your users can easily tell what is the subtotal or total amount for a item that they just purchased. Well, this is where a spanning table can come in useful, um, where you have a whole bunch of information that's extended throughout the entire table and you can have a certain amount of it that's extended either aligned right or aligned left. And that's exactly what's happening right here. So we have a total width right here for these rows and then all this stuff is a uh, aligned to the right. And how would you use this? All you would have to do is you would have to contain a table row 
the table cell and they're going to line write exactly what you want. So in this case they're doing a line write of the subtotal, the tax, as well as the total. And after that finally we have the virtualized table. Uh, this table allows us to be able to render a whole bunch of rows fairly easily without affecting performance that much. Um, like I said earlier that uh, the data table would provide us the ability to render a whole bunch of rows, but if you wanted to make sure that you don't have to worry about performance whatsoever, you can use a virtualized table and you can render as many rows as you want, up to a certain extent obviously, but uh, React Virtualized is the library that allows for this to happen. I would highly recommend that you check this out as well. It's pretty useful for rendering a whole bunch of data if you wanted. And finally, we have the API. Now this API contains all of the different types of tags that's associated to React Table in Material UI. It has table, table body, table cell, etc. We are going to be using some of this in today's tutorial. Not all of them, obviously, but if you do want to learn how to actually target a specific class name, let's say in table cell, we can go inside of it. We can see how it's being imported, what's the use of it, um, all the props associated to it, all the CSS, as well as a basic demo. Alrighty, so now we have a pretty good understanding of how to work with the documentation. Let's get our hands dirty and actually work with this component. Alrighty, so I've opened up the app that we've been building in the last couple of tutorials, and the very first thing that we have to do is we gotta import all the stuff that we need. So, what we have to do is we have to import table, table body, table cell, table container, table head, table row, table cell classes, all from material UI, so add material UI slash material, and after that we also have to import styled from material UI slash styles. And after that what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable that's going to contain all of our data that we're going to display into our grid. Um, and you can make this data whatever you want, your favorite recipes, uh, the greatest spice girl of all time, I don't know, I've never heard of that band before, but in this case I'm just going to choose my favorite players. I got their name, their rings, the number of rings, the greatest of all time rank in my opinion as well as their image. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and actually build our table. So I'm gonna get rid of this hello right here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import table container, and this container is gonna contain all of our table content. And after that, we need to actually create our table itself. So what I'll do is I'll create the table tag, like so. And so inside of this table itself is gonna contain two different tags. The very first tag is gonna be your table head, so our header basically, so the table head, and outside of there, after that is going to be our table body, like so, and inside of the table head will contain all of our header content, and inside of the table body will contain our body or our array of objects, data, object, variable right here. So you might have remembered in the beginning that we created our own custom headers as well as our own custom rows, um, and the way that we did that was we used the styled tag that material UI provides and this is exactly what it's going to look like so we're going to be using this variable as our tag and it's associated to a styled table cell and what we're doing is we're going to give it a head with a specific background color of black a color of white and we're going to customize our body to be font size 14 this is coming exactly out of the actual documentation example where we saw the customization earlier now you might also remember that we created a custom gradient row and the way that we do that is we're going to be using the exact same method where we're going to be customizing a table row in this example. And all it's going to be doing is selecting the nth type of every single odd row. It's going to provide a gradient to it. And every single even row is going to have, I think it's the orange gradient. Every odd one is the blue one. And making sure there's no border at all, hiding the last border. And the way that we use this, it's pretty simple. All you would have to do is scroll to the very bottom and instead of the table head, all we'd have to do is we have to provide the styled table cell and inside of here we can provide all our content and for our body we want to make sure that our row has a gradient to it. So firstly what we have to do is you have to map through our data. So I'll do data dot map row call the function like so and we'll do return and inside of here, we'll return each of our individual um, data points. So firstly, we have to call style table row. And inside of there, we can call our style table cell. And inside of these style table cell, what I'll do is curly braces, row.name. And after that, we'll do our rings. 
and our greatest of all time rank. And finally, we're going to create a uh, table cell for our image. So it'll be source.image alt row.name, like so. And we'll provide a little bit of styling to it. So I'll do like width is equal to, let's say, 50. And same thing for our height. And I'll give it 50 as well. So now if we look at the app, we see that we have all of our rows, but none of our headers. So to make our headers, it's going to be really simple, going back into our app. Inside of my style table cell right here, I'll give it player name. It's the very first row in our table cell is our name. And after that, we will do our uh, number of rings. So I'll do number of rings. And after that, let's do greatest of all time rank. So I'll do goat rank like so. And finally, player image. And now if we look at our app, we see that we have our header and that's associated to each of the player's uh, rows properly. So we have player name, number of rings, go rank and their image. And that concludes this tutorial. If you did enjoy this and it helped you out, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.